I will be discussing about the mammary gland and its lymphatic drainage, its arterial and venous supply and its nervous supply. So the breast is having the mammary gland and the nipple plus areola. So this is a nipple and this is a areola. The mammary gland, it is a mammary gland, it is a modified sweat gland. It is a modified sweat gland. This mammary gland can be divided into four compartments. This is a lateral side and this is a medial side. This is upper lateral, upper media, medial, lower lateral and lower medial. And this is a process which is called the axillary tail of spins. Axillary tail of spins. And this axillary tail of spins it is extensing into the axilla through a foramen that is foramen foramen of langer this mammary gland it is present in the superficial fascia and there is there is something called as suspensory ligament of Cooper. So this suspensory ligament of Cooper, it is extending from the skin to pectoral fascia. It is a fascia which is covering the pectoralis muscle. Then there is something which is called as retromammary space. Retromammary space so retromammary space it is a space so retromammary space it is a space which is present between the deep part of the gland deep part of the gland and the pectoral fascia this it is a this retromammary space is a loose connective tissue layer. It is containing loose connective tissue. Now, this mammary gland, it is getting its arterial supply from the perforating branches of internal thoracic artery perforating branches of internal thoracic artery it is also uh, getting all the branches from the axillary artery except the circumflex artery that is all branch of axillary artery except circumflex artery and this internal thoracic artery it is a branch of first part of the subclavian artery basically it is having VAT branch that is vertebral it is also getting arterial supply from the intercostal arteries next it's nervous supply it is getting its nervous supply from 4 to 6th intercostal nerve it is getting its nervous supply from 4 to 6th intercostal nerve the nipple it is present in the fourth intercostal space and it is supplied by fourth 
intercostal nerve and this is pierced by 15 to 20 lactiferous duct it is pierced by 15 to 20 lactiferous duct so the areola it is a circular pigmented area pigmented area found beneath the nipple next the extension of the breast so vertically it is extending from second to sixth rib in mid clavicular line mid clavicular line horizontally it is extending from the it is extending from lateral border of the sternum to mid axillary line along the fourth rib along the fourth rib so vertically it is from second to sixth rib in the mid clavicular line horizontally it is extending from lateral border of the sternum to mid axillary line fourth rib next the mammary bed the mammary bed is a place where the mammary gland lies three muscles are contributing that is pectoralis major muscle serratus anterior muscle and external oblique muscle so these three muscles are contributing for the formation of the mammary bed next the lymphatic drainage lymphatic drainage so here is the anterior group of axillary lymph node and here is the so here I have read on for getting an orientation so this is the anterior lymph node group of axillary lymph node here you can see the posterior axillary lymph node and here is a central axillary lymph node and here you can see the lateral axillary group of lymph node that is this one is posterior anterior this is the central group of axillary lymph node and this is the lateral group of axillary lymph node here along the uh, near the internal thoracic artery you have a group of axillary lymph node that is internal mammary internal mammary lymph node here you are having apical group of axillary lymph node apical lymph node if you want to add more here there is clavicle and above the clavicle there is a lymph node that is supraclavicular lymph node and in here there is diaphragm below there is a group of lymph node this lymph node is because it is a sub peritoneal because below the peritoneal so sub peritoneal lymph plexus it is forming a lymph plexus this is important because if there is a cancer which is developed at the mammary gland it will through this subperitoneal lymphatic plexus it will go and lodge in the ovary and 
ovary will develop a tumor and that is called Krukenberg Krukenberg tumor that is a tumor which is developed in the ovary the 75 percentage is draining into this anterior axillary lymph node so these four anterior central lateral posterior this is the axillary lymph node so from this altogether they will finally drains into the apical group of axillary lymph node so lymph from the medial part will be draining into this internal mammary lymph node and there is a group of lymph node which is present here that is posterior intercostal lymph node posterior intercostal lymph node the lymph away from the lower lateral part is drained into this posterior intercostal lymph node the in the breast actually the upper and outer quadrant of breast so the upper and outer quadrant of breast it is a frequent site of carcinomas so the first lymph node that is draining this tumor bearing area the first lymph node group of lymph node that is bearing uh, that is draining this tumor bearing area it is called the sentinel lymph node and sometimes abscess will be drained here and uh, will be formed here and it should also be drained from there so now discussing some applied first one is the mastectomy so what is the difference between mastectomy and lumpectomy so mastectomy it is a medical term that we use if we are removing one breast or both the breast that is partially or completely it is called a mastectomy normally mastectomy is done to treat certain breast cancer if we are having a cancer in the breast we will do mastectomy so then what is this lumpectomy if we are only removing the tumor if the tumor only is removed it is called as lumpectomy then there is something called as radical mastectomy so what is radical mastectomy so in this surgical procedure we will remove the breast the underlying pectoral muscles the limb axilla lymph node which is present in the axilla this is normally done when during certain advanced breast cancer conditions actually the self examination of the mammary gland it is the only way for early diagnosis and uh, appropriate treatments for example in the case of if the nipple is retracted it is a sign of tumor in the breast that is retracted nipple this is a sign of tumor it is a sign of tumor in the breast and the size of the mammary gland can be increased uh, by putting an implant inside this gland and the size of the mammary gland it can be reduced size of the breast can be reduced by uh, there is a surgery which is called as breast reduction surgery another applied is the cancer of the mammary gland it is the most common cancer in females of all ages it is more frequently seen after menopause in females especially when there is a lack of estrogen hormones and normally the carcinoma it usually arises from epithelium this cancer the carcinoma usually arises from epithelium of large duct from the large mostly it arises from the 
epithelium of large duct to relieve cancerous mass you can do mammogram mammogram and you can also do fine needle aspiration cytology fine needle aspiration cytology so it is a quick method to diagnose if there is any lesions in the breast this cancer cells it may infiltrate into the suspensory ligament which i have discussed above so when it infiltrates the suspensory ligament the breast become fixed and so the contraction when the ligament gets contracted it causes the retraction of the skin another clinical term is pau d orange appearance so actually it is pau so pau d orange appearance actually if there is cancer and this cancer if it obstruct the superficial lymph vessels it will produce edema of the skin and it will uh, give appearance of the skin of an orange and that appearance is called the powdery orange that is orange skin appearance the cancer can also spread from one breast to another breast because the superficial lymphatics of the breast it cross the midline and because of the communication of the lymph vessels with the abdomen the breast cancer it spread it can spread to liver it also can spread to pelvis and form secondaries there so until now i have discussed about the how the cancer is spreading through lymph the cancer will also spread through certain segmental veins so how the cancer is spreading through veins in this connection the veins which is draining the breast it will be communicating with the vertebral venous plexus it is we will be communicating with the vertebral venous plexus so through this communication the cancer can spread to the vertebra the cancer can spread to the brain now dealing with the development of the breast actually the gland is ectodermal in origin whereas the stroma inside it it is mesodermal in origin actually the breast is developing from an ectodermal thickening and that ectodermal thickening it is called as the mammary ridge that ectodermal thickening is called as a mammary ridge actually this ridge is extending from the axilla up to the groin and it is appearing at the fourth week of intrauterine life it is appearing fourth week of intrauterine life but in human beings the most of its extents disappears and in the pectoral region it persists that is a certain a small extent persist in the pectoral region and that persisting part of the mammary ridge is called mammary pit that is persisting part of mammary ridge this is called as the mammary pit actually from this mammary pit if this is a mammary pit certain secondary buds will develop that is second this is called the secondary buds secondary buds 15 to 20 secondary buds will develop and it grows this bud will divide and subdivide and it form the lobe of the gland so this bud will form the lobe of 
gland so the entire system it is first solid the entire system will be first solid and later it will be cana canalized that is canals will develop so at birth or later in the life at the site of the original pit where there was original pit at that site the nipple gets everted that's how the mammary gland develop now at puberty so when you reach the puberty the growth of the mammary gland the growth of mammary gland it is stimulated by estrogen so the growth of mammary gland is stimulated by estrogen and the development of the secretory alveoli the development of the secretory alveoli so it is stimulated by progesterone plus prolactin which is released from the hypophysis cerebri now dealing with certain developmental anomalies developmental anomalies so these are the developmental anomalies and the mastia means it is relating to breast whereas athelia means it is relating to nipples so in the condition of amastia the, the breast is absent in the condition of athelia the nipple is absent so the polymastia is a condition where there is super numerary breast polythelia it is a condition in which there is super numerary nipples there is more multiple nipples so the gynecomastia it is a that gynecomastia it is seen in klinefelter syndrome that you are all familiar with and that is the development of breast in the males